This is General How To. Today we're going to be talking about reverse osmosis systems. In under five minutes, I'm going to teach you guys everything you need to know about them, how they work, and how to diagnose and fix any common issue. All right, so we're under the sink. This is a typical reverse osmosis system. It doesn't matter what system you have, what brand, they all work the same way. This happens to be an A.O. Smith. That's Lowe's brand. GE is Home, Deco Home Depot's brand. There's other brands like Hydrotech, which is more higher end that could be purchased online. So first we're gonna be talking about how they work. Okay, so let's start with the cold water line, which is right here. And you could see in any system right over here, there's a T, a brass T. Now that's so you could tap into the cold water line. So from the cold water, the supply, you could call this a supply hose, that goes into the first filter, which is right over here. Some filters have two, three, or even four filters. This one has three filters and has a remineralizer, which is right there. So I can get down here. Basically the cold water will come into the first filter, typically a carbon filter. It'll get filtered into the second filter, go in, go into the third filter, typically a membrane. Now in each of the filters, it's gonna be filtering the water more and more as the stages go on. After that, you could see this particular unit goes into a remineralizer because sometimes reverse osmosis systems will filter water so much that they taste a little weird. So this is gonna put minerals back into the water. Next, you'll see that from the remineralizer, you're gonna see a hose going into a storage tank right here. Now, this looks like a five gallon tank, which it is. However, it doesn't hold five gallons of water. That's because inside the tank, there's a bladder. There's a rubber bladder where it's pressurized from the factory. Some tanks are 10 pounds, eight pounds, depending on you know what you wanna do or what the factory suggests. So obviously the more pressure inside the tank, the higher pressure that comes out of the faucet, the least amount of pressure, the more water it will hold, but the slower it will come out from the faucet. So, once it leaves here, it goes straight up there, which you could see the two tubes going straight up there to the faucet. Other than that, there is a, inside here, there's an auto shutoff. That's when it starts making water and it fills to capacity. It needs to stop. So there's an auto shutoff in here. Basically, it works for pressure. Once that tank has enough pressure, the auto shutoff inside here tells it to stop. Now you may ask yourself, what is this right here? Why is it into the drain? Pop it off. Okay, you could see some water. Now, this is called the waste line. When you install a reverse osmosis system, or if you had one installed in your house, you're always going to see this right here. Every reverse osmosis system, like I said, will work the same. However, they may look a little different. The filters may be different. There may be more or less, but they're all going to have this. That's because when the fresh water comes from the city right here, the city supply uh, line, it's going to get filtered. But what happens to the dirty water? The dirty water is going to get dropped right into the drain here. Some very expensive reverse osmosis systems will not dump it down the drain, but actually back in to refilter. So it'll recycle the water, but most systems will dump it down the drain. So like I said, uh, other than that, you'll see down over here, that thin red line, which goes straight up. There's going to be this inside and that is a reducer a flow restrictor what that does is because there's about when this is full instead of having 10 psi when it's empty when the water comes down into the filter and hits that bladder it creates more pressure so 30 40 psi of pressure 
coming out of that faucet will be too much. So inside there is a flow restrictor. That's something we'll speak about later because this is a common issue with these units. So now that you have a general understanding of how these filters work, how these reverse osmosis systems work, let's talk about some common issues with them. Okay, so let's start with the tank. Like we said, it has a bladder inside. So typically tanks will last the entire life of the unit. However, there are some instances where the bladder can have some pinholes or lose pressure over time. So how do we know that? We, some tanks will have an auto shut off right there on the top of the tank. This one does not. So what you would do is first you would turn the water off. Anytime you're gonna service the unit, make sure you turn the water off, which is the line right there. Now, in, since this one doesn't have an auto shut off, we're not gonna be removing it from there. We're gonna follow the line and we're gonna remove it right from here. We're gonna remove the tank. We're gonna empty it completely, turn it upside down, make sure there's no water inside. And then we're going to take a bike pump or a bicycle gauge, something that we could test. If you notice here, every tank will have right here, the same style as a bike tire, right there. You're gonna put your gauge on here and test the pressure. Whatever pressure it's at, if it's at zero, you know the bladder might not be good. Remember, empty the water completely. Call the manufacturer, or if you have the book, see what it says. Most tanks are between 7 to 10 PSI. So pressurize it up to about whatever the tank should be up to. Go to sleep, wake up in the morning, retest it, and if it's at the same pressure, you know the tank is good. If it lost pressure, you know the tank needs to be replaced. They're about $40, $50. Now, a more common issue, which we spoke about before, and that's why I have a replacement part, is the flow restrictor. What happens when the flow restrictor goes? The flow restrictor, like we spoke about, reduces the amount of pressure and flow up into the tap. So if you notice on the back of all reverse osmosis systems, right about here, there's a hole. Not sure you can see. Right about here, there's a hole. Now that's for air, air pressure to be released because if the flow restrictor breaks, the water and air is gonna be shooting out of here. So the manufacturer doesn't want that. So they put an air release valve in the back over here. So if you have water and air escaping from here, if you wake up or you come to your kitchen and the whole entire counter is full of water, which I'll post a video of what that looks like, you know that water and air is escaping from here. So that would be the flow restrictor piece that we spoke about. That could be ordered from the manufacturer. It's very cheap. Now, how did I know that it was this and not a clog in my drain. A lot of times people will say, hey, well, if the water is trying to escape down the drain and the drain is clogged, where is it gonna go? Look, this goes straight up into that faucet. You can see very far up there is my faucet. So if there's a clog in the drain, the water has nowhere to go. So where is it gonna go? It's gonna go straight up into the faucet. So a good way to see if it's not your drain and it actually is this piece is very simple. What you're gonna do is you're gonna put a bowl below or a cup and you're gonna disconnect this piece right here like I did and you're gonna run your faucet, not the house faucet, but your reverse osmosis. And as you're running that, over time you're gonna notice water is gonna be dripping from here. So it's gonna be dripping into the bowl not into the drain. So if water still comes out of that piece in the back right here, the air gap piece, you know that it's not the drain and it's a, that it's the flow restrictor. Here, you could see a replacement faucet of that right there. That's because I did everything that we just spoke about below and I still was having water leaking from that air gap. So I knew that the faucet was no good. Other than that, a common issue is low pressure coming from your faucet. Now, that could be two things. That could be the pressure in the tank. Remember I said, hey, if I want higher pressure from my faucet above, 
I can technically pump more air in here. The more pressure and air you pump into this tank, the higher amount of pressure and flow you're gonna get from here. Like we show you, if I pump more air down below, I'm gonna get higher flow from here, but I'm gonna get less water that's gonna be allowed to be stored in there because inside, like we said, is a bladder. So once I pump more air, that bladder builds, builds, builds. It allows less water to be in the storage tank. So if you're a single person in a house where you don't use much water and you want it to come faster, then you could put a little bit more air in there. Not much, maybe one or two PSI. But remember, the more air, the less quantity of water stored in there. So if you do have less pressure coming from up above and you're having the correct pressure in the tank, there could be one other thing. That could be dirty filters. If you don't change these when they're supposed to, to be, they get clogged. And what that could do is that could start to cause buildup in your lines. You don't want that. So make sure that you do change these when they're supposed to be changed. The only other thing that ever goes with these are very uncommonly, there could be a crack in the tank in the holding tanks for the filters. And that obviously you could see. In these you could see no water leaking below. So that would be something you could see right That's away. That's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope it gave you a little clarification on how reverse osmosis systems work. They do look very complicated, but they really aren't. Doesn't matter again which system you may have, they all work relatively the same. So it'll save you guys a lot of money. There are always common, common issues that go with these. And that's it. Definitely comment down below and please subscribe. Thank you.